Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the next episode in Georgia's Marvellous Medicine. Let's remind ourselves where we were yesterday. Grandma was just about to hit the roof as she'd risen from her chair upon taking Georgia's Marvellous Medicine. And we were just wondering what was going to happen to Grandma next. At this point, she's hovering just above the ground after swallowing the brown mixture. Here we go. Are you all right? said George. She was suspended up there in space. The old girl was beyond speaking. The shock that George's marvellous mixture had given her must have been tremendous. You'd have thought she'd have swallowed a red hot poker the way she took off from the chair. Then she came down again with a plop and back into her seat. Call the fire brigade! she shouted. My stomach's on fire! It's just medicine, Grandma. It's good, strong stuff. Fire! The old woman yelled. Fire in the basement! Get a bucket! Man the hoses! Do something quick! Cool it, Grandma, George said. But he got a bit of a shock when he saw that smoke was actually coming out of her mouth. And out of her nostrils. And there was black smoke coming out of her ears as well and blowing all around the room. By golly, Grandma, you really are on fire, George said. Of course I'm on fire. I'll be burnt to a crisp. I'll be fried to a frizzle. I'll be boiled like a beetroot. George ran into the kitchen and came back with a jug of water. Open your mouth, Grandma, he cried. He could hardly see her for the smoke in the room, but he managed to pour half a jugful down her throat. It created a sizzling sound, the kind you get if you have a hot frying pan under a cold tap. The old hag bucked and snorted. She gasped and gurgled. Sparks of water came shooting back out of her, but eventually the smoke cleared. We've put the fire out. That's the good news, Grandma. You'll be all right now. All right? Who's all right? There's jacking jumpers in my tummy. There's squigglers in my belly. There's bangers in my bottom. She began bouncing up and down in the chair. Quite obviously, she was not feeling comfortable. You'll find it's doing you lots of good, uh, Grandma George said. Good? Doing me good when it's killing me? And then she began to bulge. She was swelling up, puffing up all over. Someone was actually pumping her up, or that's how it looked. Was she going to explode? Her face was turning from its usual um, hot purple to a nasty green. But wait... She had a puncture somewhere. George could hear the hiss of escaping air. She stopped swelling up anymore. Now she was going down. She was slowly, slowly getting thinner and thinner again, shrinking back and back slowly to her shrivelly old self. Um, how's things then, Grandma? George said. She didn't answer. And then a really funny thing happened. Grandma's body gave a sudden, sharp twist and a sudden, sudden sharp jerk and she flicked herself clear out of the chair and landed neatly on her two feet on the carpet. That's terrific, Grandma George cried. You haven't stood up like that for years. Look at you. You're standing up all in your robe and you're not even using a stick. What a dose of medicine. Grandma didn't even hear him. The frozen Popeye look was back with her again now. She was miles away in another world. Marvellous medicine, George thought. He found it fascinating to stand there watching what it was doing to the old hag. What next, he wondered. He didn't have to wait long. Because suddenly she began to grow. And it was quite slow at first. Just a gradual inching upwards, inch by inch, getting taller and taller and taller about an inch every few seconds and in the beginning George didn't really notice it much but when she had passed the five foot six mark 
I was going on towards being six feet tall. George gave a jump and shouted, Yay, Grandma! You're growing, you're growing up! Hang on, Grandma, you better stop now or you're going to hit the ceiling. So you can imagine Grandma is now taller than me and her head is just about touching the roof of the room. Grandma didn't stop though. It was truly fantastic. The ancient, scrawny old woman getting taller and taller, longer and longer, thinner and thinner, as though she were a piece of elastic, being pulled upwards by invisible hands. When the top of her head actually touched the ceiling, George thought she had to stop. Problem was, she didn't stop. There was a sort of scrunching noise as bits of plaster and cement came down from the ceiling. Hadn't you better stop there, Grandma, George said. Dad's just had the whole room repainted. But there was no stopping her now. Soon her head and shoulders had completely disappeared through the ceiling, and she was still going. George dashed upstairs to see up to his own bedroom, and there she was, coming through the floor like a mushroom. Whoopee! She shouted. Here I come! Steady on, Grandma. Just watch me grow! This is fantastic! Oh, you're in my room now, George said. You're making a mess. Terrific medicine, she cried. Give me some more! Oh, she's as dotty as a donut now, George thought. Come on, boy! I want more! Dish it out! I'm slowing down! George was still clutching the medicine bottle in one hand and the spoon in the other. Oh, well, he thought, why not? And he poured out a second dose and he popped it straight into her mouth. Oh! She screamed and up she went again. Her feet were still on the floor downstairs in the living room, but her head was moving quickly towards the ceiling of the bedroom now. I'm on my way now, boy, she called down to George. Just watch me go. That's the attic above you, Grandma. I keep out of there, it's full of bugs and bogles. Crash! The old girl's head went through the ceiling of the bedroom, just like it was butter on toast. George stood in his bedroom gazing at the mess. There was a big hole in the floor, there was a big hole in the ceiling, and there was a grandma sticking up between it. Her legs were in the room below, her head was in the attic. I'm still going, George could hear from Grandma. Give me another dose, boy. Let's go through the roof. Oh, no, Grandma, you must not go through the roof. Out to heck with the house. I want fresh air. I haven't been outside of the door for 20 years. By golly, she is actually going to go through the roof, George told himself. He ran downstairs. He rushed out of the back door into the yard. It would be simply awful, he thought, if she bashed up the roof as well and created a big hole there. His father would be furious and he, George, would get the blame. He had made the medicine. He was the one that had given it to her more than one dose. Don't go through the roof, Grandma, he prayed. Please. Don't go through the roof. See if she does in tomorrow's Jack and Nori episode. Grandma seems to be liking the medicine, doesn't she? And George is becoming increasingly worried by what he's done. Let's see what happens to our two main characters tomorrow. And let's see if she does indeed head upwards and upwards. See you later.